Just about four weeks ago, all of us were absorbing the terrible news of yet another mass casualty shooting at the hands of yet another troubled young man right here in our nation's capital. And as the details unfolded, the same conversations, the same unanswered questions collided again in the public square. Was this a story about untreated mental illness and unheeded warning signs in a fragmented mental health care system? Was it a story about unregulated firearms and a failed background check in a system that's supposed to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people? Was this scientifically predictable? If it was, why didn't somebody do something? Well, you know, there's no short supply of pundits and experts out there who are perfectly willing to answer those questions for us. And I'll tell you how they do this. It's not that hard. You can do it, too. All you need is this remarkable device called the retrospectoscope. It's just amazing what you can see through this thing. Now, the trouble comes when you flip it over and you try to point it out into the future and use it prospectively to anticipate and predict violence in people with mental illness, and then it all turns to fog. And even a trained psychiatrist, it's not much better than a coin toss when they try to predict violence in their patients. Well, if it's that unpredictable, doesn't it make you wonder, does mental illness cause violence? That's the question, isn't it? And I can answer it for you. The answer is, it depends. It depends on three things, at least. What do we mean by mental illness? Do we mean the major diagnosable psychiatric conditions that impair reasoning and perception of reality and uh, mood regulation, like schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and, and major depression? If we do, there's a pretty weak correlation there with violence and mental illness. But maybe it's this whole complex picture, this panoply of uh, you know, maladies of, of personality and uh, behavior, from addiction to psychopathy and uh, the psychological sequelae of trauma and explosive anger, all of that. And uh, if that's what we mean, well, you know, lots of people uh, who commit violent acts meet criteria for some sort of psychopathology. And we could even say that uh, in some cases, uh, you know, violence is uh, pathological in itself. Uh, and, you know, what a healthy-minded person would do a thing like this. And what do we mean by uh, violence? Anyway, are we thinking about bar fights, uh, you know, uh, intimate partner violence in the domestic sphere, or a mass murder-suicide with a firearm? Uh, and by the way, uh, suicide accounts for more than half of all of the firearms-related deaths in this country. Well, maybe it's all that, and maybe it's this other, you know, big picture uh, of, of all kinds of, of violent acts and, and aggression, you know, some of it culturally sanctioned and, and, and motivated by ideology and religion and politics and all this. And are these things more uh, similar than they are different? And what does that mean about violence and mental illness? And finally, what do we mean by cause in the question, does uh, mental illness cause violence? Maybe it's really straightforward like this, you know, if mental illness at time one, then violence at time two some sort of chemical reaction you could reduce to a mathematical equation. <laughs> well, if that's it, the answer is no. There's just too many people with mental illness who are never going to be violent. And there's too many people who are violent who aren't mentally ill. But maybe it's something more like this, more complicated, like these dominoes, you know, where the uh, mental illness and violence are embedded in this complex causal system with all these precursors and co-determinants from the social environment to genetics and all of these intervening uh, uh, variables, you know, uh, uh, interaction effects and, and mediators and moderators and like substance abuse and access to lethal means. And if that's what we mean, well, yeah, mental illness uh, causes violence sometimes. Surely it does, but uh, the dominoes aren't lined up. Like, you know, we can be sure they're going to fall. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And sometimes the people with mental illness are violent, and that's uh, not why. Uh, maybe they just, you know, had a terrible traumatic childhood, and they live in a, a terrible neighborhood, and they drink too much, and they hang out with unsavory characters. So it's complicated. Did you know that 60% of the adults in this country believe that people with schizophrenia are very likely uh, or likely to be violent? I mean, if you came from Mars and you learned everything you know about schizophrenia by watching television in this country, you'd think that every single person with schizophrenia was a homicidal monster. That's unfortunate. But why does it matter? It matters because this idea in the public mind determines action. We act on what we believe. So if we think people with mental illness are dangerous, we're going to fear, fear them and, and we're going to you know, reject them and uh, support public policies that restrict their liberty, even if those policies 
aren't particularly effective or fair. And in the end, we might discriminate against people with mental illness, you know, in the distribution of all the benefits and, and uh, uh, resources and, and, and rights in our society. And there's a big disconnect because, you know, scientifically, we know that only about 12% of people with schizophrenia are violent. And that's maybe just some minor act like pushing or shoving or slapping somebody. If we want to talk about what people are really worried about, you know, homicide against a stranger, well, that's about 1 in 70,000 people with schizophrenia, so 69,999 are not going to do this. Now, substance abuse really does increase risk, but if you factor that out, the absolute risk of violence in people with just mental illness is about 7%. The relative risk is maybe 3 to 1, so comparatively, they're more violent. Uh, and any attributable risk is about 4%, so if we magically cured all these miserable diseases tomorrow, violence would, I mean, it'd be a great thing, but violence would go down by about 4%, and 96% of it would still be there. As a matter of fact, people with serious mental illness are way more likely to be victims of violent crime than they are perpetrators. There are a lot of people in the criminal justice system uh, with serious mental illness, but even they are not very violent. You know, the majority of arrests are for minor offenses like trespassing and public intoxication and stuff like that. I mean, violence is a very small part of it. But what does this mean for this project of trying to predict and prevent mass shootings? Well, you can't do that, really. It's a needle in a haystack. Have you heard that? Uh, it's what they say, you know. Um, you can't predict it. You, you'll never find them. It's a fool's errand. Well, guess what? The needle has found us. So let's look at it. Let's pick it up to the light and, and look at it through our interdisciplinary lenses and see what we can do. Let's try to find the haystack in the needle. Look at these characteristics. And, you know, there's a lot that we could do. What if we got upstream to prevent the unpredicted, attack some of the social determinants of violence, try to have healthier communities with fewer kids exposed to terrible trauma and, you know, growing up to be perpetrators. And what if we also provided evidence-based treatment to people with mental health problems and substance abuse problems in a timely manner? And what if we also did a better job in limiting access to lethal means, like prohibiting firearms from everybody with a history of violence, even a, mi a violent misdemeanor? That's a lot stronger predictor of violence than mental illnesses. I think if we did all those things, we would live in a much less violent society. Now, there's not going to be some big headline in the New York Times tomorrow that says, uh, you know, improved mental health care system uh, prevented mayhem on Thursday. We wouldn't know that, but why would it matter?